Dr. Adyaru, thank you for coming to talk about evidence-based medicine. Last time I drew a two-by-two two table on the board, my entire wards team passed out of boredom. How do I do this right? <laughs> That's not uncommon. When we think about evidence-based medicine, you always think about one equation, right? WTF equals TMI divided by OMG. So whenever, that's the only equation that I actually ever want you to remember for evidence-based medicine. Um, when you're on the wards, no one is going to sit there and calculate numbers for you. No one's going to sit there and calculate likelihood ratios, positive predictive values. We just want to know how we take care of patients. And so one of the most important things to think about in doing evidence-based medicine is how do you make it simple? How do you make it so that when you're seeing a patient, you can make decisions right away without having to look up too many things or calculate too many numbers. And so a couple of things that I've done, for example, let's say you know this, this morning we round on a patient who came in with chest pain. And we're talking about, well, what's the best way to figure out whether, this patient, whether or not this patient has coronary disease? And one of the students brought up doing a stress test. And so we talked about, well, how good is a stress test? How good are other history and physical exam findings for diagnosing coronary disease and someone coming in with chest pain? And one way you can do this on the fly is to use an app called Diagnose. And Diagnose app actually has a lot of different diseases, symptoms, um, and uh, findings. And there's a couple of nice things that you can do with the app. So let's say we, we, our patient's pretest probability was 24%. And that's just based purely on the prevalence of disease. Now, obviously, that can change depending on where you practice and your clinical experience. And you can actually adjust the number depending on what you think the patient's pretest probability is. And it walks you through different history, physical exam, and EKG findings that may help you uh, figure out whether or not this patient truly has ACS or whether you should be concerned about it or not. And it calculates it based on likelihood ratios. And if you look at the app, there's different likelihood ratios for different findings. The higher the positive likelihood ratio, the better the test is to help rule in. And the lower the negative likelihood ratios, the help, more it helps you rule out. And so you can kind of click through and figure out what your post-test probability is, which is shown at the very bottom. Now, there's some things that are not on here. So for example, stress test is not on here. So how do I figure out how good a stress test is for ruling in or ruling out coronary disease? And one good fast way to do that is to use Dynamed. Dynamed is available free for all users at Emory through the library. And it actually, if you type in stress test, it will tell you, depending on the type of stress test that you order, how good it is. And so you can, it can help you really quickly figure out whether or not this patient um, is going is actually has, is going to, the stress is going to be helpful to help you rule in or rule out coronary disease. Another example is, let's say someone coming in with, um, shortness of breath, and you're trying to figure out, okay, does this patient have COPD, or do they have heart failure? And this app, or you can go to JAMA Rational Clinical Series, which is also available to the library, you can find out, so what are the best findings on history and physical exam that may help you figure out this patient has decompensated heart failure? So for example, orthopnea, PND, the presence of an S3 gallop, um, chest textures, interstitial edema, are actually really good findings that can help you uh, determine the patient has decompensated heart failure. That's a lot you can do in inpatient, but what about outpatient? Outpatient, sometimes when we're teaching, we're very limited on time because we're signing out residents and they have to see patients frequently um, and you don't want to take up too much of their time. So the JAMA Rational Clinical Series actually has a lot of, out, a lot of things that are relevant to outpatient. One of my favorite is shoulder pain. And Every resident will always say the patient has an empty, a, a positive or negative empty can test. And so I always ask them, how good is an empty can test to help you figure out someone has um, rotator cuff disease? And I show them that actually it's not a very good test at all. And some, there are some better tests that you can show, for example, um, internal external rotation and pain on abduction that may be more helpful than doing empty can test. So really the goal is to figure out what are the best ways, what are the best maneuvers, what are the best history and physical exam findings that you can teach uh, your residents and interns that will help make quick decisions for them on the fly without thinking about actual numbers um, and calculating any numbers at all. So we talked about several different um, 
use uh, resources and apps. Um, the app, the the link to the Diagnose app, a JAMA Rational Clinical Series, and Dynamed are shown below. And if you have uh, interest in making videos for the future, please check out our last few videos.